Cheers. Cheers. Welcome, Welcome back. back. Merry Christmas! Retro Review episode 41. Tonight we're reviewing Gremlins. Steven Spielberg presents Gremlins. No, that was more um That was more like um something else. Oh titty! Or like, you know. <laughs> oh titty! Yeah, it wasn't like that. Oh titty! The little the Jawa. No, the Jawa. The Jawa. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, this is going to get off to a great start. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, first things first, shout out to Mohammed Almanay. Oh, right. Our Patreon big spender who yes. requested this review. I'm sure he's not alone. I will say I'm glad it was between Chucky and Gremlins, and I'm glad he picked Gremlins. I mean, you would have been fine. I'm sure I would have been fine. Are you afraid of dolls coming to life? That is a fear of mine, so it is scarier for me. I mean, not anymore. It was definitely a fear as a child where like, yeah, yeah. after Toy Story and then like- Toy Story I mean, really it, messed me up. It's cause I'll be honest. there's a fine line then between, oh, my charming stuffed animals and then, oh, they're gonna murder me. Yeah, yeah but it, they're alive and it, sentient? Right, or do oh. they resent me for <laughs> keeping them on that shelf? I don't know. God, anyway. I'm glad that you had the same thought. But anyway, we're talking about Gremlins, yeah. the original 1984 Is classic. there a new one? There's a sequel. Right, but not like a remake. No, they have yet to remake it. I'm honestly surprised they haven't. Yeah. I'm not asking for it. No. I'm good, but I am surprised. Although, Spielberg... Because it was Amblin, so maybe he has some, like, he gets to decide if there's a yeah. sequel thing. Yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm, maybe. We're definitely going to Google it. It's going to be like, the Gremlin sequel, starring all women. <laughs> because second thing second shout out to our wine sponsor wink try wink.com slash movie bitches you get $22 off your first month of wine so level setting I level had setting. I had never seen this movie Andrew had never seen gremlins oh I don't want to uh, come for your faves <laughs> didn't love it didn't hate it yeah didn't love it I finished it, mm -hmm. sitting there, Rotten Tomatoes, and I'm reading some of these little review blurbs. And one of them was like, oh, it's a perfect encapsulation of Reagan and Cold War and consumerism. And I was like, oh. I think they may have thought they were reviewing Gremlins 2. Oh. If that is the case. Why? Does... So Gremlins 2, the new batch, which is arguably a better film, it kind of is I mean the original is simplistic and with a sequel it always has to be and then we did the same thing but, but bigger it's now there's a hundred million it's aliens sure. and instead of one there, you know so let's calm down but the new batch the sequel is just straight up a satire oh. of consumerism of, of and it called a bunch of stuff like smart it, like it, like it, Furbies and well Furbies are based on gremlins makes sense but the sequel has all these fourth wall breaks and in-jokes and it's basically just like a Looney Tunes cartoon. It's almost like a Mel Brooks movie. Like it's huh. just straight up. Joe Dante never liked the original Gremlins. Okay. He's gone on record. Like he's like, I don't know why it was so successful. Who is that? The director. Of the- of- Of Gremlins and Gremlins 2. Oh, so it's just a Spielberg produced. Yeah, he didn't direct it. Oh. Does it make more sense now? A little bit. So Joe Dante directed this and the sequel. He never quite got the love for it. I mean, he, you know, you know, he's like, oh, that's great that it took off. But he was like, I'm confused. Cool. Uh, so the second one is essentially just making fun of the first one. Love it. And just like, they make fun of all the rules and how they don't make sense. And like, they just totally like rag on themselves. And it's essentially a parody of the original. I mean, that's pretty funny. So it's pretty great. So maybe that person that was reviewing it was confused and thought they were reviewing the sequel. I mean, maybe. I was surprised it's written by Chris Columbus. Yeah. Who, typically, I like his writing. Yeah, it's a great, fun story. Um, it's a fun concept. So, Chris Columbus wrote it, and originally it was much more of a dark, just horror movie. Mm. And it was going to be rated R. Oh. And then Spielberg loved the script, and he was actually going to get Tim Burton to direct it. But he had never directed a feature-length film before, so he was like, no. Oh my god. So he gave it to Joe Dante, who I love Joe Dante, don't get me wrong. Love him. He did The Howling, one of my favorite werewolf movies. He did Inner Space, which I probably shouldn't go back and rewatch, but I loved it as a child. But he also did like the Looney Tunes movie, which is very bad. But 
great. On a whole, I genuinely really like Joe Dante. I feel like you have to say it, Joe Dante. Joe Dante? <laughs> Welcome to Joe Dante. <laughs> Welcome to the Hotel Dante. <laughs> Welcome to the IMDb page of Joe, Joe Dante. Dante. Yeah, I mean, he did like The Explorers and Matinee and The Burbs. Like, he does these sort of dark comedies that often have like a satirical or social kind of comment or twist on them. I, I got a lot of those things. I think your issue is, so Gremlins started as like a dark yeah. horror movie mm -hmm. with maybe that was like not super dark, but darkish, right? And Spielberg took it on and it became, let's make it more family friendly. Right, can we make it more like It's a Wonderful Life? And it's like, no, you can't. I mean, right? It's basically just It's a Wonderful Life with Gremlins. So I think it had so many amalgamations of yeah. versions mm -hmm. where like the Judge Reinhold plotline disappears. Where in the original script, it was a whole thing, and he had more to do, and blah, 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 blah. So I think... What, Sorry, who, who is he? He's the asshole guy that works at the bank that's like, Hey, come over to my apartment, Phoebe Cates. Oh, right. I forgot he Gone. literally never shows up never again. Never see him again. <laughs> Apparently in the original script, he like locks himself in the bank vault. And oh. is like going insane, because he's like trying to protect himself or whatever. I mean, I like that. Right? Talk about a commentary on consumerism. Yeah. And, and obsession with money. Oh, bummer. Well, so, so I think that's what you're grasping at, is that it doesn't feel like a clearly formed, plotted film. No. But there are a lot of things that are amazing about it. Yes. With the gremlins and the, like, there's a lot of things that are iconic about it. Absolutely. But when you just break it down as a film, yeah. there's issues. Yeah, well, it was interesting because in a lot of ways, somewhat in both tone and concept, uh -huh. this is not terribly dissimilar from Tremors. No. But Tremors was so much more fun. It's so campy. Well, beyond the camp, there's two likable, yeah. fun, uh -huh. communicating main characters. There's a third main character that they bring in where they all have to get to know each other and work it's together. It's more of an adventure. Yes. Honestly, I hadn't seen Gremlins in a while, and I had forgotten that like Corey Feldman's barely in the movie. Like I remember him being in so much more of it, and it being more of an adventure, and let's all team up. Yeah. I guess in my mind, I combined Goonies in this, which is also Chris Columbus and Spielberg. Right. And so when I was watching it last night, I was like, oh, no, it's really just him and her then later yeah then later where but she's not <laughs> they don't really talk and i think that's what made then their kiss so i literally was just like oh no <laughs> which is not what you're oh, saying no but it was just out of nowhere and it was like oh you remember how our entire town is dead now because of me and the and it wasn't like a let's kiss before we die kind no. of, you know like like it was just like this weird like <laughs> well i think Part of the charm is that he's this nerdy dork. Like, I think that is probably more realistic. Sure. And not as much of a movie trope, right? That he would be like, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna yeah. I like you so much, but I'm so awkward. Yeah. I wish he had a little more going on, but I think just like that's true to his character. I would say a lot of the characters were all just very superficial. Mm -hmm. I wanted more depth. Right. I like wish that there was more of this movie. Right. Because now that you're talking, like you start to realize like, okay, yeah, the scene with him in the, in the bar after the bank. Right. Where I'm going to be a millionaire by the time I'm 30 and then I'm going to, you know, whatever, I'm going to run this town. I mean, I'm confused how the math of all that worked when out. When he but... was like, I'm 23 and I'm already a whatever. I was like, 23? Who are we kidding? What's going on? <laughs> 23? Look, I'm a junior vice president at 23. I mean, fair. I mean, well, he's also, just young. But sure, but like, yeah. It's funny too, I also don't remember, I, mu I must have just like totally mixed this movie up with other things. I had remembered that they were in high school and they are totally not. They're like young professionals working at the bank. Oh, I guess that's true. He goes to the high school. Corey Feldman is at the high school. There's the high school teacher. But like, in my mind, they were both still in high school. Oh, is that not his high school teacher? But he has graduated. He has since graduated. Oh, he has? Yeah. I think. I mean, they both like work at a bank. You can't do part-time work at a bank. I guess it's the summer. It's not. It's the winter. It's the winter. I think they're both like just out of high school, like young professionals. Maybe. I think that's... Because well, yeah, they do say, oh, like you're supporting your family. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> so, 
but in my mind definitely like, high school high school you know like, but like I, I thought that too and that's what's kind of unique about it like in every other kind of movie like this they would just be in high school high schoolers right. whatever right. but right. it is sort of interesting to have these young just out of high school young professionals like trying to just make something of themselves and they haven't quite yeah. You know, left the nest yet? But they're all like, there's something a little different about that. Sure. Now, can we roll back tape? Yeah. The narration. Oh boy. Well, it's, it's such a weird way to start a movie. Let me tell you a story. Yeah. That's me there. Let me introduce myself. Peltzer's the name. Rand Peltzer. That's me there on the corner. This all felt like studio notes to me. Like, oh, we didn't get it. In we have to day. establish how he got here and whatever. And so. Yeah. Uh, the dad, you know, going to Chinatown, nondescript 1940s Chinatown. There was like an old timey sailor, and I was like, <laughs> "Is Anger's away? What's going on?" Like I was a little confused. <laughs> I was like, "What?" But also like all very like stylized. Very stylized. It was. I mean, it felt basically like Chinatown from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yes, it's very much that era of filmmaking where, like, when Steven Spielberg was young. It was all of the tropes of adventures and foreign lands and the right. magical foreign minorities and and that sort of thing. Yes. And so in some ways this movie is commenting on that. You got yourself a bad case of dragon breath. Like it's okay. not, I feel like it's not straight up trying to be racist. No, no. And like I, I think it's it's making a little bit of a satirical joke on those things. They never did like offensive accent work. No. I'm sorry. Mogwai, not for sale. And I was like, oh, they're really going to lean into this and it's not going to be comfortable. And then it was just like, oh no, he speaks perfect English. And I'm like, okay, at least they didn't there was do no that. I was reading some trivia about that actor, and apparently he was like 70 something at the time, and but he looked too good. Like, they were like, his skin was just too hydrated and beautiful, so they had to like old him up. Oh and God, I was I like, it. love this story. <laughs> love this for you. But this like long, it felt like a TV show. Yeah. Long intro. It's like, when are we gonna find the body? Dun dun. You know, right. it's like, it's, it's like five and a half minutes <laughs> of not the main character. It was so. Funny to me how this just wouldn't happen now. No. A lot of this, particularly the intro, I guess, reminded me of Detective Pikachu. Ooh, boy. It was <laughs> much better than that. Yes. Much. But you know what? I mean, like, it seemed like this was kind of the tone that they were trying for. Detective Pikachu was, and then failed. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. I agree with that. But, like, rather than, like, oh, we're going to go for... Chinatown, or like, oh, we're gonna go for like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, where they're like, right, right, right. and the intentionality wasn't there. They were yeah. like, we're gonna try for Gremlins, <laughs> and they missed. <laughs> and they, and they, they missed the dartboard. Woo! <laughs> we'll talk about the dartboard later. Oh my god, this movie feels really slapdashed. Oh uh, yes. Even though, so like, the technology was brand new, and they were dealing with all this stuff, and I think a lot of the Gremlin stuff actually still looks, looks really great, and particularly Gizmo. Well, yes, he's our you know lead. He looks great. Gizmo. So cute, by the way. So cute. But then, the, yeah, the gremlins look fine. Yeah. Sometimes better than others, but, like, good. Yeah. Not as, like, great as Gizmo. Well, in, in the sequel, they look fucking great. Mm. And there's, like, a bajillion more, and they all have different personalities, and, like, you could definitely tell that whatever. I think the second one came out in 1990, I want to say. Oh, okay. Something so, like, like the that. six years made a difference. It really made a difference. And they got Rick Baker to do... He's like very famous for in creature design, creature or, special effects yeah. world. But talking about the slapdashness, like the story seems secondary. Let's say where they were like, it's a creature family movie. Yeah, the plot doesn't really matter, which is fine. Sure, but it really cracked me up that like arguably the most important part of the movie is the rules, right? Sure, and they're told over voiceover of clearly b-roll footage of Chinatown in slow motion because they didn't get enough footage. There's three rules you've got to follow. You yeah, have what kind of rules? It was such like a fuck you. Like, or, or that kid actor like couldn't get it all in one take. Something happened. That was not <laughs> the first plan. That was not plan A. And keep them away from water. Don't get them wet. It was plan C or D because it was so bizarre. And rule number one, you can't get them wet. Right, right. Rule number two, they hate bright lights. Right. You know, it's all being told in slow motion and voiceover. Oh my god. Really got me. Yeah, rule number three, don't feed them after midnight. I mean, that certainly is iconic. Yes. I wouldn't be as critical of it, I don't think, if it wasn't for the fact that they 
spent so much time teeing up all of these supposed plot lines, and then, then yeah. get left. Because it's like, if it was just like, and then it's this kind of family action yeah. weird movie where you're like, yeah, this is cool and fun. I don't know what happened. Great. It'd be one thing. But yeah. instead they're like, oh, let's have this entire plot line where he's an inventor. Right. But then none of his inventions ever comes right. in handy except for when she shoves one's head into the juicer. Right. In a perfect movie, some invention of his would finally work. You know, the... Uh, the chopping wood thing would break through, break her out of the asylum, and right. save the day, and oh, finally something came of this. You know, like it would, yes. there would be a heroic moment with one of his. The toothpaste button actually like made him melt, or whatever it was. Whatever it was, yes. Yeah, yeah the bathroom buddy, you it, know, it, actually, like the magnifying glass shot a light. The, sun, yeah, the, 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 the dental mirror <laughs> reflected the sun from the corner, and it. it and made Gizmo him melt. can use it because it's small, <laughs> so he dexterously. Yes. You know, pew, you know, that would be a tighter film. There is a lot of loose threads, let's say. <laughs> I'm also just concerned. Uh huh. Is everyone dead? No. Who's everyone? The town? No. We sure? Yeah. Well, and even so, you know, the couple, Dick Miller, and he's like a character actor. Mm -hmm. He's in a bunch of Joe Dante movies, and his wife, the, the World War II racist yeah, guy, yeah. who's just like, Russians, damn it! You yeah. know, and just like, foreign cars! Berg, we turn them on a zenith! You know, that guy. His goddamn foreign cars, he always frees up on you. They get run over by a snowplow, but they are in the second movie. It was a miracle, they survived something, blah, blah. So, they didn't even die. <laughs> I think just the teacher, yeah. Which is unfortunate because he's the only person of, person color. of color. Well, no, the the Chinese guy at the beginning. But he's the only person of color in this town. Right. And he dies first. Yep. Yikes. And then the awful old lady. Mrs. She does die. Dangle. Dangle? Dangle. Dangle. Ding. Dangle. Yeah. Mrs. Deagle, it's Christmas! She was so much. I love that she was straight up evil. Oh, yeah. She is just the Wicked Witch of the West. I want your dog. I mean, I'll get you a dog. Yes, I will. Yeah, yeah. Like it was just straight up. I'm pure evil. I'll put him in the dryer. Ah, I was like, oh my god. I'll catch the beast myself. Maybe I'll put him in my spin dryer on high heat. What's happening here? This woman is like literally threatening this to murder. <laughs> It was a lot. It was a lot. But can we talk about the town? Well, yeah. So the movie finally starts okay, yeah. after this long Right, this is an introduction. This is me. That's me on the corner there. Yeah, see? Almost like a Waylon Jennings, like, like Dukes of Hazard. You probably noticed there's something different here. Well, this is Hazard County. Because that guy, oh, I forget his name. It's like Hoyt something. He's like a country music. Like he wrote a bunch of songs. Oh. He's like a musician, country star. And Who is this? His dad, the, the oh, actor gotcha. playing his father. The guy that kind of looks like John Goodman? I thought he kind of looked like like a Joe Don Baker vibe. You don't know who that is. Um, but that's who I thought. Okay. But, um, but Wait, who plays Norm? He's Jason Sudeikis' uncle. Oh, really? Yes. And his name is George Went. Oh, yeah, George Went. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He was kind of giving me a George White vibe. Right. It feels like I'm going to tell you my home, homespun story about sure. the tale, tall tales yes. or whatever. Yes. Which would work more if he was the main character or if it was... If it was like him as a kid. If this was like a flashback maybe. Yeah. Or something. Because he disappears. That's a, yeah, he a, disappears for the entirety of the movie of, and then shows up and is like, what lot, the hell's going on here? There's a lot of convenient things. Like... I have to go out of town so your mother will be alone. But I'll, I'll take, take the dog. dog so we don't have to worry about that because that's a nightmare to try and deal with the dog and the gremlins. It at was the same stressing time. me out when they tried to murder the dog. Why is everyone trying to murder this poor dog? This poor dog, get out of here. Leave Barney alone. One more minute, you would have been a dog skull. <laughs> so funny. So I think also this movie is not for you. It's very dark humored, and yet it's sort of in this wrapping paper of a kid's movie. Right. Right? So that I don't think was ever necessarily going to work for you. Maybe. On a high level. Sure, maybe of not. Of enjoyment. Maybe not, yeah. But the town, it starts, we finally get the credits, we hear my, oh my, one of my favorite Christmas songs, Darling Love. <laughs> Baby, please come home. Christmas. Let's sing it deck the uh -huh. Christmas. Doesn't feel like Christmas at all. Christmas. <laughs> we pan down 
Brown from the Indiana Jones, the fake radio j disc jockey. Yeah. He's the guy on the radio that keeps being like, be like, oh my god, this is crazy. Stop calling me with all these crazy calls about Gremlin. Gremlin! <laughs> I like that. I could have used, maybe make him the maybe maybe. I like that. I mean, he wouldn't know enough, but sure. But not even a narrator, I guess, but just like more of a... Oh, oh yeah, like, how to come a through, through line. line. You know, something yeah. like that would have been yeah. fun. But anyway, we pan down, and it's the same... It's from the Universal Backlot. It's the same town as Back to the Future. Makes sense. It's fun. There were so many things in this that I was like, oh, they'd never get away with that. Mm. Like, oh, Spielberg would never let them do, like, an Indiana Jones joke now. Right. Oh, Disney would never let them use Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs now. I was shocked. That kind of stuff where you're like, ooh, the, the heyday of the cocaine riddled 80s when everyone was just like, yeah, let's do it. You know, yes. The answer is yes. And cocaine. You know, it was like that uh, that kind of vibe of like, they were running and gunning. Yeah, they were. Let's see what we can get away with. They were. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then we get to meet Corey Feldman for the first time in yeah. his Christmas tree outfit, which seemed right. like cruel and unusual punishment. Very odd. This <laughs> seemed weird. But even then, I could see the charisma, the star power. I love Corey Feldman. He's great. Cool. You know, it's been a rough journey, rougher now. Love him. It's great. He was in Lost Boys. I know. Great. He was the one of the um... Frog Brothers. Yeah. And, and we're kind of meeting the townspeople. Here's the sheriff. Oh, there was a weird thing about the cop. Sorry to cut you off. That's fine. There was a weird thing about the cop at the Christmas tree lot that was like, you're going to have too many left over. Why don't you give us one for he, free? He was being cheap. Sure. But then the other guy came up and was like, I paid, I paid for, for mine. You know, it was setting up this sort of town. Money woes and, of Christmas. Money woes of the, of the whole town. The whole town seems to be in desperation, except, except for the rich for lady. Except for the rich lady in the bank. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a wonderful life. It's essentially, I mean, isn't, isn't the town in that called Bedford Falls, and I this is like it. Kingston Falls or something. Like, it's yeah. very much that. Yeah. They watch It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, I yes. mean, it is in public domain. Just so you know. No copyright claim on that. <laughs> no. I th so I think it was setting up the town, and at this point it seems like the town is going to be the main character, right? You know, like, and then we're going to get to right. know everyone. It's right. Ooh, yeah, yeah, vignettes yeah. of the town. But no, then we're introduced to our main character, Billy, played by Zach Galligan, who is in this and... And Gremlins too. And he said that enough's enough. Oh, I don't think it was his choice. <laughs> I mean, he's he's fine. <laughs> Where's the shade button? Where's the shade button? I mean, I don't think he was like, I'm cool, I'll back away. I don't think it was um no the guy from Sixteen Candles situation where he was like, I'm gonna move to like Vermont Ooh. and make furniture. What was it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was fine. I wavered. Sometimes I was like. I really like that he's sort of a non-traditional... Like, Emilio Estevez was up for this part. Like, it was supposed to be more like... Emilio! 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 <laughs> it was supposed to be more like average pretty guy, I think. It's mm. the people they were shopping it around to. Although, I think Judd Nelson also, he's the guy from Breakfast Club, the Bender. Mm. But I think I read that his audition was too angry. Oh. And so they didn't think it... But there is something sort of sweet about Zach Galligan. There's sort of just a, a There's unique, a lot of it that works. A unique innocence about him. Sure. Or whatever. I mean yes. this perm, we could get into it if we want. Yikes. How do you and feel? Do you about think it? that's just his hair? Oh, I don't know. I figured it was just that was uh, curly hair, you know. Uh, it was real Kurt Cameron y. I don't know. I don't know, was it? I don't know. I did notice though that he does seem to have Dean Stockwell's eyebrows. And once I noticed it, I couldn't unsee it. So there's that. He was kind of giving me, I guess, Ben savageness. Yeah, he could be a savage brother. Right? Yeah. I liked him for the most part. Yeah. He could make it work 90% of the time. Yeah. And then there were certain times where they call on him to like really send home a, a moment, and his reactions just weren't cutting it. Right. You know, oh, and then that's, I mean, well, we'll talk about the monologue. <laughs> I mean, I want to get... We'll get into the monologue. <laughs> I mean. But speaking about the credits, yeah. I did notice that it had a female editor, Tina oh. Hirsch. Oh. Solo credit. Usually there's like three of them when there's one woman and you're like, oh, she came in at the end and fixed it. But <laughs> Tina Hirsch looked her up. She seems fabulous. She edited Captain Ron. Love it. I like Captain Ron. That movie is great. I love Captain Ron. I'm a little worried to go back and rewatch it. I've watched it somewhat recently and I still loved it. Okay, great. Because I love that movie. It, it's, it's fun. 
great. It's a fun, silly adventure. Yeah. She edited Explorers, which was Joe Dante's movie after this. She did Airplane 2. Oh. She did Death Race 2000. Loved it. So she was in the Corman, the Roger Corman mm -hmm. group. Because I think Joe Dante is like uncredited as directing um, some of Rock and Roll High School. And so it's fun when you look at the Roger Corman people. They all kind of stuck together. Paul yeah. Bartel and all of them. They all gave each other jobs. We have gremlins in our attraction. Could you help us? Gremlins? In this theater? Now? Most of them became like successful or did some stuff and kind of carried on. It's like a nice little college, it seems like, or something. Mm -hmm. Little Corman School of Colleging. Film, filming, film colleging. I don't know what happened. I lost it. I lost it, guys. But she also edited one of the worst movies I've ever seen called Heart Beeps. Oh, heart Beeps? Oh, good lord. I don't even I think I turned it off. And I looked and it's like 118 minutes and I turned it off. <laughs> it's notoriously terrible. It's like Andy Kaufman and Bernadette Peters and they're robot people. Um, it's atrocious. <laughs> I'm here to tell you about this new movie. It's called Heart Beeps, and it's about me and my pal. And I thought maybe it's one of those Kauf <laughs> Andy Kaufman things where, like, well, with time, you realize that even though it was horribly embarrassing or very uncomfortable at the time, like, with retrospect, wasn't that hilarious? When it, oh, no. No. It wasn't. <laughs> so, anyway, shout out to Tina Hirsch. Yeah. yeah. So, Christmas. Yeah. Uh, my inventor father is bringing me home a pet. Right. Thanks for the most high-maintenance present ever father but he is really cute though. he is very cute I mean, he's holding like a little baby oh my god right i was like oh i mean gizmo's kind of awesome mm -hmm. you know as long as you don't feed him i mean or ever get him wet or ever give him a bath do they drink water Can well that's what I, it? I was confused because like is obviously just water what if you spilled I, orange juice on him i mean i just have a lot of questions wait is it things that contain water because that seems problematic they would they would die <laughs> Because, like, they fed him food that had water in it. Right. So I assume it's just, like... A chemical reaction if they... I don't know. If it's know. just water, water. I do love that. So apparently the bright light thing... Yeah. ...is purely a device because the technology wasn't there and they want they never wanted to show it in full light because it would look like shit. Love it. So, oh, turn, dim the lights! I love it. But see, work it around, work around. That's very smart. And I they love look that. great. Yeah. Oh, everyone smart. looks great by firelight. Yes, yeah. You know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, they turned it into a plot point, too. Exactly. You know, I was like, oh, great. The, the sunlight saves the day. Like a vampire. Yeah. When he was like, ah! Yeah. I was surprised. I honestly was surprised that he wasn't like, oh, what a world, what a world. Right? What a world, what a world. Okay, I would so be in this movie. I, there was a lot of references. I was like, oh, I see the references movie. So if you think there's a lot of references in this one, quadruple it oh, for the sure. next one. But in a it different way. Oh, yeah, the next one is just straight up. That's intentionally like, oh, and then we made a re That's like Casper references. Yeah, yeah. Where This has a few of those, too. Though. Well, sure. Just like, and then there's a flash dance gremlin. Because everyone was doing flash. I mean, Elvira did it. Just flash dance everywhere. Got a little gremlin leg warmers. Yeah, the 80s. My cut off sweater. <laughs> Made me laugh. Where'd so, they get the, the clothes? Don't even get me started. I have a lot of questions about that. We could go down a whole rabbit hole with that. We'll get into the props and the gremlin sized things oh my gosh. later. Yeah. I've got some yeah. questions. <laughs> But again, you can't do that with this movie. It's no, just pure no, fun. You exactly. But you I'm have... gonna bring it up and we're gonna talk about it. I have some questions. <laughs> Got some questions. So yes, um, he gets this unmanageable, unwielding pet, but it's the cutest fucking thing ever. So. But is he not? He's not really unmanageable. You. We just tell you literally like can't feed him after midnight. That's not that hard. Show it. He can never be in bright light or he will melt. Well, sure. Like a vampire. Sure. And you can't get them wet ever, even a drop. Well, that's the hard part. The drop, the droplet of water thing yeah. was not specified, nor like... Well, also there's like stuff people brought up like, but they're constantly walking around in snow. Oh, I thought about that. <laughs> I thought about that. But the fun thing is, in the second one, they just straight up have this conversation. Okay. Wait a minute, what about this? What if they're eating in an airplane and they cross a time zone? I mean, it's always midnight somewhere. What if they're in a different time zone and they're on a plane and they cross over and then it's midnight and then you feel like they have a whole thing. It's like great, I'm glad. Because like even the filmmakers were like, 
This doesn't make any sense, but whatever, let's see what happens. It'll be fun. <laughs> How long can you not feed them after midnight until daybreak? Right. Yeah, exactly. I don't it's know. complicated. Or until midday, you can't feed them until noon. It's a complicated, high maintenance pet. Sure. So, quick commercial break, and we'll be back with more gremlins. Of course, then the gremlins, they get wet, all of the rules get broken, wreaks havoc, they, the little balls, I mean, I thought oh, this yeah. looked great. Yeah! The little puff balls, and then they slowly, like, Ooh. open up like a rose. Yeah. Like, and stop, and, yeah. you know, stop yeah. animation or whatever, and, oh, there's more of them. And then, I guess it's the combination, really, of they've gotten wet, or rather, Gizmo has gotten wet. Right. Birthed them. Yes, they're... Then they eat after midnight. That turns them into the gestation period. Yes. Then they become awful gremlins. It was, it was two, the combination of two mistakes. Yes. Can we talk about his mom? Yeah. I love, this is my favorite scene, I think. The kitchen? She was just like, he's like, Mom, get out of the house. Yeah. You got it. And she was like, bitch. No. Nah. I'm not taking any shit from these gremlins. Exactly. It just murders all of them. Like, yes. Except one. Except for the one. The Christmas tree. The Christmas tree one. Came out of nowhere. Loved it. Yeah. I just was excited that it didn't become, oh, save me. Oh, my God. I mean, Absolutely. he saves her eventually. Well, but like, sure. she took care of fucking business. Yeah. She shoved that. I mean, yeah, the microwave. That. Loved that. I mean, then again, there was uh, yet another plot of, <laughs> I don't feel like they took enough time with this, where he's like, oh my god, mom, are you okay? Here, go to the doctor's house. I'll never see uh, you again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Be safe. Bye. Oh, 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 oh. Gone from the movie. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I needed him to have had a friend. In my mind, it was Corey Feldman, but but then he disappeared. Yeah, he's like, not. Like in my memory of it, they hung out more. I guess. I mean, well, but also, why is he hanging out with Corey Feldman if he's? My assumption is that Corey Feldman was an underclassman when he was still in high school, and because he's into nerdy things too, and drawing and comics, they were friends because they had similar tastes sure. in a small town. Sure. Even though they had an age difference. Right. Just sure. My guess. Also, nothing ever happened to the comic bookness. It's just what he wants to do. I guess it's just a in a in a in a different movie where the script was tighter. It'd be like, what do you mean they're selling gremlins on the back of, like sea monkeys? And there's the rules, and we have to you know there would have been like a clue on the back of the comic. Oh sure. Of like <clears throat> sure. And like oh, but it's fake. It's obviously fake. Like the sea monkeys don't actually wear crowns and like look like that. But it's like oh no, but these gremlins are real. That kind of thing. Sure. But yeah, then the teacher does kind of his his mistake is the big one, because he leaves the food out. Although, I don't right. think, was he ever told No. any of the rules. We're willy-nilly with the rules. He's just like, here, you can keep one, I guess. There's plenty. <laughs> Watch, now there's two. <laughs> when he was just like, look, and he made more, I was like, oh no. Right? <laughs> it was problematic for me because we didn't know. It seemed to have hurt Gizmo. Sorry. Who's in that jar? Nothing, just water. I know, it was really sad. You know, and, and he never seemed to quite recover. I, I couldn't tell. No. Had he lost... This unwanted pregnancy that they, well, you know, forced upon him. Well, and then it was like, had he lost... I mean, it, Is it I, part of him? That it seemed like it. And, and so it was like, oh, now we're killing off part of him? He was never quite whole again. It made me feel weird. It did. And that's all I can say about it. Yep. We're never going to get the answer. No. But it made me feel weird. Although, so the thing with the dartboard and them torturing Gizmo. Yes. It's actually an inside joke oh. with the crew because the freaking animatronics never worked. And they, it was horrible and it would take forever. And they so were like, it was like, so yeah, they were like right. fuck you, Gizmo. We're going to put in a scene where like we're like, yeah, let's fucking torture this thing. I love it's it. like, we hate it. Yeah. That's the cutest thing ever. I did think so. So the teacher's been killed by the gremlin. Oh, no. I mean, his body is there. Later when Billy's trying to explain to the sheriff, he's like, there's gremlins, they're everywhere, blah, blah, blah. I was like, go show him the dead body, body. of your teacher. Yeah. Then they murdered teacher. this teacher. He is dead. <laughs> Billy's never like, oh, wow, remember when I found that body? Like, it's yeah. never mentioned. Dude. That's what I'm saying. Like, there was such an uh, ambivalence to the fact that this entire town was seemingly being murdered by yeah. these animals. Yeah, it's a hard tone. And yeah. it's, a, it's a different note. I think it is mostly successful in its tone of this sort of comedic horror. Right yeah, in the line. yes. Mostly. If you don't think about it too hard. I guess it's interesting that you say, like, 
I really now kind of want... Like a really dark one? Well, like a Shaun of the Dead, Grabbers, any of those kind of like horror where like people actually do get murdered right. and they have to like they have to come together to figure it out. Well, there are just so many knockoffs of this movie. I'm sure. Ghoulies. Oh boy. Munchies. I want to say there's one called Munchies. <laughs> actually, I think I was looking it up and Tina Hirsch directed that randomly. I think that's true. Oh no, is that like when you get a case of the munchies and then... But they just look like little munchy cheese. They're like... <laughs> what are munchy cheese? Remember those those toys? Those like weird monkey... No. ...face toys that were like, munchy cheese, munchy cheese. Munchy cheese, munchy cheese, oh so soft and cuddly. Some kind of monkey? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's a munchy cheese. I love you, munchy cheese. Great. But anyway, there's countless movies that tried to recreate this formula. Was Attack the Block during Christmas? Winter. Right. I don't know if it was Christmas. Maybe not. But I like that. I like, ooh, we need a, a Shane Black um, That's what I'm, oh, rewrite yeah. of this. Yes. Like, yeah, I like it to be darker, but also I like that Christmas aspect to it, that juxtaposition of like, oh, is it that, like, Carol, Carol, oh my God, murder. <laughs> They just try to just murder people. Like they just murder them. I do remember being so terrified of stair chairs. Sure, because after of this that. movie, I it really uh, that is the thing that of all the things in this movie, that is the thing that stuck in there the most. I'm also just confused to go back to the narration. <laughs> yes. So at the end of the movie, I know we're jumping ahead, uh -huh. he goes, so if you ever have something acting up on you, turn on all the lights, check under the cupboards in your bed, because it might be gremlins. Was that a thing that existed, a term that existed before this movie? Because like, the the World War II yes. guy was like, oh, gremlins in the car, there are gremlins in the car. I don't think so. I mean, there's a car called the gremlin. Oh. Huh? Like, an old car. Sure. The gremlin. Okay. But I know that, so Mogwai, which is the yeah. Chinese word that they use for it, is like demon in Mandarin. Oh. But gremlin, I don't know where that, I mean, the dad, or somebody, it was, it was, just, it was the World War II guy. He was, was just like, like gremlins. there's gremlins in the car. Maybe it's a thing, but I just don't know. Keep an eye out for those gremlins. <laughs> you sure. might get one. Well, speaking of it being darker. Uh huh. So it was originally closer, going to be closer to like a rated R, like right. the original script and everything. And so they trimmed it down. But this movie and Temple of Doom are sort of credited with having to create the PG-13 rating. Oh, wow. It's not quite gnarly enough to be R, R. but not quite nice enough to be PG. PG. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. The voice of Gizmo. Uh-huh. It's Howie Mandel. Oh. <laughs> Random. The singing too? No, that was like a... That seemed like some sort of theremin or yeah, something. Yeah. Maybe it was his voice that they affected? Maybe. I don't know. But yeah. Interesting. Howie Mandel. Cool. Bobby's World! Remember Bobby's World? Nope. The Howie Mandel cartoon? We was like, Bobby's World! Nope. You don't remember that at all? No clue. <laughs> really? No. So, okay, so back to the gremlins, because I just still am a little confused as to like, sometimes they're murderous and crazy, and sometimes they're just drunk men. Well, one literally, ex okay, so they're in the bar. One of them's just a flasher. He exposes himself to her. <laughs> I mean, What's happening? It was such a dated joke. I mean, obviously, but I, it was, that was such a thing, like flasher, they had the trench coat. And yeah, the that's hat. true. It was very, it was flasher. very like, I'm a flasher. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. so bizarre to me. We gotta get into this bar scene because I got some questions. Okay, great. So, shoot. So. I mean, don't shoot because that's what they do with their. That was terrifying, yeah. by the way. Yeah. He's like a like a mugger. He's yeah. got like this yes. ski mask. Yes. And he's like, like oh. also this gremlin-sized gun. I have questions. I've got questions. There's no answer. But we're going through, there's little vignettes of all the gremlins. We get uh -huh. the flash dance gremlin. Uh -huh. We get the poker playing gremlin. Right. With his, like, sexy wife? Okay, because, okay. Okay, because... It was like a drag, or was it? Well, so there is a female gremlin in the sequel. Okay. That's like a female gremlin. <laughs> Yeah. 
But all of these gremlins seem to be non-gendered, let's say, or sure. mostly male in their dress, but like, right. whatever. Yeah. But this one was dressed, like it was like... It had earrings. It was like Born Yesterday. Like it was like um, Judy Holiday, and she was the mobster's wife. And they have a whole scene yep. where he's jealous. Yeah. I really... But not so much as... Okay, so then the next... I want to talk about this next part for like a while. Okay. So that was weird. And I was like, okay, cross-dressing. Yep. I, or... Queen presenting as a female. I don't... Or as his wife. Maybe they just wanted to make the reference. I don't know. Where are they getting the references? They're gremlins. We Where are they getting the we earrings? We can't get into it. Where are they getting gremlin sized earrings? I can't get into it. My brain is broken. This next scene, this like Harold Pinter level subtext film noir beatnik play that occurs. Yes. Suddenly the music drops and it's jazzy. <laughs> And it's zooming in, and it's, you know, of all the gin joints and all the, you know, world, and he's some detective. Yeah. And then this other gremlin shows up with a chicken puppet? And, and a, a devil? A lobster puppet. Oh, the lobster. <laughs> and does, like, a, a performance. I really, this was... I don't know what this was. <laughs> I couldn't figure I, it out. I like had to rewind it. I was like, was that a lobster? <laughs> what are we saying? What's happening? He was so excited to show him his play. <laughs> this like Sam Spade character. <laughs> it wasn't like blind Lauren McCall. She walked into my office. Right. Blah, blah, blah. It was something else. It kind of reminded me of a goofy movie. <laughs> or like a Punch and Judy reference, but it wasn't. No. It was, no. I just, this broke me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Someone else wrote this. This is some, I don't Maybe know. Maybe it was just improv from like the animatronic They made the puppets! I don't know. They had to make a gremlin sized lobster and chicken hand puppet and the chicken had like a hood on? It was so like weird. a chainmail hood? I don't know. I could talk about this. Like we could just be done because I don't know what this was. I don't know. Oh boy. So anyway. So then they all end up at the movie theater where it's dark. Not yet. Oh, no, not yet. First, we have to talk about the monologue. Oh, boy. So this is the most famous part of the movie. Oh. The studio wanted it out. Spielberg was like, I don't like it either, but it's Joe Dante's movie. Joe Dante fought for it. I mean, I think it's one of the reasons it works, because it became so famous. Sure. And it's so shoehorned in. It's very oh. bizarre. So weird. <laughs> Now I have another reason to hate Christmas. They could have gone such a different route, right? Oh, my dad committed suicide four Christmases ago. No, it's or... so much. It's so much better that it's the most fucked up thing <laughs> ever. Ever. It's like but one of the make most any sense. fucked up things in a movie. <laughs> the worst thing that ever happened to me was on Christmas. They run into the bank. He's like busy doing something. Yeah. He's like, I gotta find a flashlight or something. Yeah, yeah. And she's just like, gosh, another reason for me to hate Christmas. Here's the monologue. <laughs> me and mom were, were decorating the tree, waiting for dad to come home from work. A couple hours went by, dad wasn't home. And he's not even really listening. He's like doing other things and she's like, well. Christmas day came and went and still nothing. Didn't know where he was. Then I tried to light a fire in the fireplace. And that's when I noticed the smell. If you really break it down, it's actually it's so fucked up. It's so extra sad. The dad dresses up like Santa Claus. Firemen came and broke through the chimney top. They pulled out my father. <sighs> to surprise them, to do a nice thing, slips in the chimney, breaks his neck, dies instantly. At least he's got that. Sure. But then he's been 
rotting in their house as they've been trying to find him for days. Yeah. I mean, it's just so fucked. But, and then was probably singed a bit when they started the fire, too. He was dressed in a Santa Claus suit. He'd been climbing down the chimney on Christmas Eve, his arms loaded with presents. So it's kind of a debate as to whether it's just a full joke or if it's both. I mean, I just don't understand. What do you mean? Because, like, again, people, at least in my understanding, don't actually fit in chimneys. That's not a real thing. They're not person-sized. Maybe theirs was. And he was gonna, he was gonna come down from the roof? Yeah. He, just, he, wouldn't he fall then? If it was large enough, then he would just fall. Did he have fall. a Gatling? What was, you know, were, what was the plan? What was this plan? This seems crazy to me. Darwin <laughs> I mean, Awards then. I don't was, know. Oh, yes. Whenever people talk about this movie, it's like, oh, it's that cute, you know, kind of scary horror movie. But then that Phoebe Cates monologue where she talks about how her father died dressed as Santa in the chimney. And they didn't know. And then the Dawson line of, and that's how I found out Santa wasn't real. And that's how I found out there was no Santa Claus. Right? That's what makes <laughs> that, that joke. Yeah. Like, that's the, right. the joke. That's, that's what ruined Christmas was that, not that her father had, had died and was rotting in their chimney, but that she found out that Santa wasn't real that Christmas. Oh, it's so good. Oh, my oh. God. It's so insane yeah. that they don't find Judge, Judge Reinhold in the in the vault. Oh no, bummer, yeah. And they just go, yeah, to the movie theater. To the movie theater where Snow White, I was shocked. So I guess the thought was, I think they came out, Snow White was released the same day, the Gremlins was supposed to be released. There was some tie-in with the date. Gotcha. And that's why they wanted it to. It was like the 40th anniversary or whatever. Something, I forget exactly, but it was something like that. Cool. I mean, I love that they were like, let's see if we can get Snow White. Oh, yeah. they gave it to us. Yeah. I think Walt Disney was dead at this point. <laughs> Otherwise, that would not have happened. Right? I can't imagine. And like, let the, to let them sing Hi Ho. Hi Ho. All the Hi Ho. Hi Ho. But they're like all vicious gremlins that had just murdered people. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> But it also seemed like maybe they took on a lot of whoever was leading. So if the movie was leading and they're, they're just watching the dwarves, like, they're happy. They're like, But then it, if Stripe is, like, aggressively murderous and leading, then they're aggressively they murderous. Yeah, maybe. There wasn't enough backstory of, like, who are the gremlins Well, because I think originally... Oh, because originally Gizmo was just going to turn evil. Oh. Uh, and like he a was Chucky gonna, situation. Yeah, it was, oh, he's so cute. And then he turns and he's... Stripe, essentially. Mm. And then I think Spielberg was like, no, he needs to stay cute. We need like a good guy on that side to be rooting for. Sure. So they invented the, the evil Stripe character. But then um, Billy was supposed to save the day, not Gizmo. Oh. And they rewrote it because like everyone's like, this fucking thing is too cute. Like we yeah, have to we give do. him all of the screen time. Yeah. I mean, it was better. Like, driving around in a little car. Oh my god, right, so stupid. Um, they have a whole showdown. Phoebe Cates is flipping every switch yes. that has ever existed the, oh my god. In, until the no. end of time. I have a question. Okay. Okay, so there's the showdown between Billy and Stripe. Where did he get a, a realistic and working gremlin sized crossbow? The... And chainsaw. Yeah. When he shot him with that fucking crossbow, I was like, what? This movie just went to the next level! <laughs> the next level. Yeah, I mean, it was crazy. And it comes at him with a... I guess it was supposed to be like a sporting a, goods store like, section. Regardless. They were small. They were tiny. There's no reason there would be a child-sized working chainsaw. So here's a question. Uh -huh. So then Stripe makes it to the fountain. Mm. He's standing in the fountain. Yeah. It's, it's like, you can literally see that he's already wet. I'm just like, but... Uh, they, they had to make it work when they could make it work with the animatronics. Maybe when you're a gremlin, you have to be submerged. Wait, now you're just making stuff up. I am, so do they. But like, because we only see him replicate when he's submerged. Sure. That's why. Does the quantity of water seem to relate to the number of yeah. replications? Yes. Okay. So are we, do, do like the cells or, or is there some sort of... Don't hurt your brain. Okay. <laughs>
There is no answer. Save the day. Yep. Spike, I thought this looked great. Spike like melts. melts. Like it looked better than Raiders of the Lost Ark. Like he like fully is like blah, yeah, the skeleton blah. lunges yeah, out. Yeah, but the skeleton, I mean, I was fascinated by this. The skeleton moves, is yep. like animated, and then deflates. And melt, and, and it was all in one shot. Yeah, I was really impressed. It I, was good. I didn't know how they did that. It was really good. I really. And then I was like, it was bubbling still, and I was like, oh, is that how they set it up for the sequel? No, Gizmo's still alive, and he gets oh, uh, oh, sure, and then it just happens all over again. Different. Cool. And more interesting. Sure. I think. Yeah. Leonard Maltin shows up to review Gremlins. Oh yeah, I love it. In Gremlins too, it's great. What does that even mean? It's then, wacky schmacky. It's the, wacky schmacky. Breaks the fourth wall. Yeah. It's Joe Dante being like, oh, you want me to make another one of these? Fuck you. I'm going to do whatever I want. Yep. Love it. But anyway, I, I do appreciate this movie. I do like this movie. But it does have issues on a on a, just like a pacing, yep. uh, breakdown movie level. Yeah. But there's so much fun in it. Yes. And there's so many iconic things in it. And the... The look of the I gremlins, think the gremlins is iconic. Are, yes. Like it's it was the first of its kind, it broke the mold. Like there's a lot of good stuff in here. I still don't know about the lobster. <laughs> you're, just, you're never gonna know. I thought it was a devil. It had a lot of little tent tent to, it had little it was a lobster. Even if it's a devil, what the fuck does that mean? I, don't know. I mean, regardless, he has two hand puppets. Yep. <laughs> and they're he's putting on some kind of performance. I don't know. I really, he seemed really dedicated to it, though. Yes, very. That yeah. was what sold it. He really, it was earnestly wanting to show it. Yeah, exactly. Other <laughs> puppet was like, fuck you, I don't care. I'm having my own different reference moment. I don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, cheers. Thank you, Mohammed, for requesting this. It was I, I, a silly Christmas. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we got into it, let's say. Yes. I hope you're satisfied with how much we got into it. Yeah, I mean... Oh, if you know the answer to the lobster question, by all means. But like, for real though. <laughs> for real. So cheers, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah. Happy it's Hanukkah. Like a Christmas Hanukkah Kwanzaa. Happy Holidays. Yeah. Next year we'll do Die Hard. I know, I really wanted to get into it. You know, it's funny, I've, there's been such a really interesting backlash of people being like, Die Hard is not a Christmas movie, shut up. But it is. But is it? Yeah. Or does it just take place at Christmas? You could say the same thing about Gremlins. Well, fair. No, Gremlins really tries you to... You haven't seen Die Hard. True. So what are you talking about? I, I don't know. Great. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! <laughs> Thank you.